What does mommy work as? Hmm. He work as a journalist. So what does a journalist do? Build documentary. A documentary is kind of like a news model. Did you watch the one about the construction uncles? Yeah. What did you think of the show? Was that why? Because I, I don't wanna. I'm supposed to become sick. I produced a documentary, One of Us, and it was a show about how foreign workers in Singapore were being infected with COVID-19. It was also a story about the massive logistical exercise to rehouse these workers. And it was also about all the people from different walks of life who came together to help the foreign workers overcome this crisis. We started on this documentary in mid-April after infection numbers in the dorms were climbing. The workers that I met had friends who were infected but they themselves had not gone through the COVID-19 test. They were not coughing and sneezing but there was definitely a chance that they could have been asymptomatic carriers. So definitely there was some risks involved for me. I'm okay with the risks but I have two young children at home. My girl Ashley is close to two years old, my boy is four years old and I was really afraid of passing it to them. So first thing that I did was I sent them off to my in-laws home. And then I had no physical contact with them for the duration of the shoot and for 14 days after. Ready? Do you remember when you had to go to Nanai's house to stay there for one month? Yeah. And what were you feeling? A little bit sad, a little bit happy. Why were you a little bit sad? Because I thought you were when you become sick, but you are not. You thought I was going to become sick? Yeah. Why? Because you are going, you went out. And you you think that, that there's COVID-19, that's why you don't let me. And I I thought about you, so I, I was just crying at the window. Oh, you were crying at the window. Because I miss you. You miss me, okay. So on Mother's Day, my son gave me a card that said mommy has a tough time at work every day and by that time, I had not seen him face to face for a month so that card really cracked open my heart a little. Usually when we're making a documentary, we have a cameraman, a sound man and myself, the producer. But in this situation, we wanted to minimise the exposure of the team and so I filmed quite a bit of this documentary myself. To create empathy, you needed to see their facial expressions as they were talking about you know, their fears. But without a mask, the liver droplets would be flying on me. So safety precautions were obviously very, very important. I bought these clear glasses just in case the saliva droplets you know, landed on me and landed in my eyes. And then I had no PPE, right? So I'll tie up my hair and then I'll stuff all my hair into a cap. And then when I was done with it, I'll be like washing the cap. After I was done with the shoot, I will spray down myself with disinfectant and wipe all my equipment and when I got home I would change into a fresh set of clothes the moment I entered the door and I will drop my clothes into laundry detergent. The second major challenge was that many of the places that we wanted to cover was out of bounds for us. For example, the dorms with the confirmed cases were gazetted as isolation zones. The clinics where many sick workers were were also considered quite high risk. So we relied on workers who were doing Skype calls with us and filming with their handphones. No problem, they will take care of you. I started on this project, I was reading a lot on social media and I thought that the dorm conditions were just truly horrific. And after talking to many NGOs and foreign workers, I found that a majority of them were actually satisfied with their living conditions in the dorms. There is a difference in dormitory accommodations. Some are definitely better than others. Some have a nice cinema, movie room for them, a gym and nice recreational facilities. Others don't. I feel the majority are generally quite happy. However, obviously you always have a minority who are in substandard conditions. And these obviously are the ones that we are aware of. I think that crisis reveals the fault lines in society and as a journalist, it's our job to examine these fault lines and tell the stories of people who fall through the cracks. 
and clearly there's a problem with the way that we treat some workers. The crisis, it's also an opportunity for growth and learning and I hope that after this crisis, you know, as a society, we can examine how we can treat uh, foreign workers better. I really want to thank the uncles who <laughs> the floors and built our houses and I hope they get one.